Welcome back to PlayStation Corner, my name is Alex and today we're taking a look at Call of the Sea on the PlayStation 5. A first person, narrative driven adventure experience, does this deliver a story worth visiting or is this one more of a sinking ship? Well with that luck hit subscribe, join our growing PlayStation family and let's get started. So here we find ourselves in the 1930s taking on the role of a woman by the name of Nora. Nora suffers from an illness and it runs in her family, black spots that cover her arms and hands and they've gradually materialised over the years. They do not appear to be slowing down either. In an act of desperation to solve this issue after basically medical diagnosis failed her, her husband Harry sets off to find a cure on a remote island that is somehow linked to whatever may be this, you know, solution. Now he's gone missing and you must set out following his footsteps and understand where he has gone. It starts off relatively relaxed, a simple case of just exploring this island, but it's not long until the game's true influence reveals itself, and that is of a Lovecraftian nature. It embraces monsters, personal demons, small amounts of horror almost, and then some seriously surreal detours. It's fantastic stuff honestly, I loved every moment of the story it tells, and while you could just rush through the story and do very little else, I found it piqued enough of my curiosity to make me want to explore and find these secrets and almost collectibles found within this world. If I had to compare it to any game out there that would be Firewatch though as it blends together character study with adventure and that is a big compliment, Firewatch is up there as a personal favourite. <laughs> So gameplay and backing up this story is first person exploration and a whole lot of puzzles and that gameplay loop honestly it rarely changes, you know, find a location, investigate to find clues and trinkets and then solve typically whatever puzzle lies at the centre awaiting you. But it's the way the world and the locations change that make it so intriguing with almost verticality in moments, locations under the water and even climate shifts to a certain extent. It's rare here, a puzzle outstays its welcome, and they do change relatively frequently. The exploration though is a pleasure as you follow in your husband's footsteps, you know, seeing his story unfold through the clues that you find, while gradually also learning more and more about yourself and him. It's got this real good balance of progressing the main story forward, while also taking time to give you hints at what life was like you know before and what the future may hold for you it led for me to a serious investment in these characters controls though are simple and it essentially comes down to movement with the left stick and then interactions with the x button there's also an option to sprint as well for ps5 owners i rarely noticed any beneficial use of the dual sense if that is something you are looking for as you are kind of hunting for clues then the only other real controls would be your diary where Nora jots down information you have discovered. You're going to be referring to this a whole lot over the adventure. I'd also suggest here take your time, do not miss a clue as I did on more than a few occasions. The puzzles then, and it's not too difficult if you do the right amount of exploration, but it's for sure not easy either. It has a nice ramp to its difficulty, but as it embraces you know, the Lovecraft that's clearly pumping through its veins, the solutions get a little bit more, let's say, surreal. The only issue I have, honestly, I felt like at times there were maybe a few too many puzzles. I actually think they could have removed a few, dialed it back, and this would have helped with the pacing of the game, you know, giving you an opportunity to explore just a little more freely. Instead, the game can feel almost very stop and start, and I think this location is stunning. It deserves just a few moments of additional freedom to let us just take it all in. Outside of that, issues wise, very little honestly. The controls can be maybe a little awkward at times to focus on what you need to interact with. It highlights objects with a white dot, but just occasionally you'd need to kind of awkwardly position yourself perfectly to see the action play out. That is really me digging though. Those moments are few and far between and I've had a great time with this one. Graphically it's a beautiful game and I referenced Firewatch earlier, I'm going to be doing that again here as it goes for that low detail, almost cartoony look for me that just has a ton of charm, it works perfectly alongside the Lovecraftian designs in to create these stunning moments that can be either over the top with their vibrancy or of course like creepy and dark at the same time. 
It's a visual style personally we do not see enough of and I really do not understand why. The locations in this world as well, again absolutely stunning, it changes so frequently which really surprised me given you know how small this island initially appears. When it comes to issues, honestly, I notice some minor clipping occasionally. The textures can be a little underwhelming when you do get up close to some of them. And I also notice then some pixelation if you look into the distant landscape. But again, minor things and seeing this one running like full 4K glory is an absolute spectacle. Its designs, its locations just never fail to impress me with their variety. Audio finally and first off, Sissy Jones, I think that's how you pronounce it, is on voice acting duty here playing the lead of Nora. She is incredible. She was in Firewatch as well and she delivers just another standout performance. To reinforce though the excellent voice acting, we also get an incredible score that initially plays into the 1930s theme, you know, kind of a lot of orchestral, but these are stunning moments, reinforcing also the epic. But then as the story starts to become a little more unhinged shall we say so does the music and it embraces the mystical truly stellar work though and this is all then backed up with a nice sound effect field to kind of bring this world to life so the final verdict and call of the sea delivers on an intriguing story mixed in them with adventure and puzzles its design is naturally very basic you know walk run solve a puzzle repeat no combat or major interactions at all actually in fact I'd go as far as to say it's a largely lifeless world as you set out completely alone but when pieced together it's incredible how alive this world actually feels and you always kind of have that sense of you just missed your husband by a few moments and the world as well it's always like there's something just out of sight sometimes sinister sometimes not. The world then is just a pleasure though to kind of find your way around the option to find collectibles and expand on the knowledge of these characters and the story is welcome. I'll absolutely be back to revisit this one and see what I missed. My first playthrough it took right around the 5 hour mark I suspect. Next time I can do it under 3 hours now I know the solutions to all the puzzles. That all said though look outside of a few pacing issues for me maybe a few too many puzzles at points where they could have just let the game breathe a little bit I can still highly recommend this one to puzzle adventure fans out there and it's a great 8 out of 10 from me. It can stand now proudly alongside games like you know Firewatch, Edith Finch and Gone Home. Truly incredible work that should not be missed though by genre fans. Will you be adding this one to the library or are you holding on to that cash? I'd love to see a physical release for this one. I think it's more than deserved. With that though then hit subscribe, join our growing PlayStation family and I'll see you all on the next video. Thanks everyone.